baby isn't too bad, and at times is pretty cute. Okay, is it just me, or was this entire movie a fluffer? Think about it. When you watched the ending of the first one, did you not expect for a sequel to actually follow up on that ending? This did, technically, in the last two minutes or so, after we watched what almost could have been a big budget remake of the first movie. So yeah, I'm gonna be spoiling the ending of the first movie here because I can't talk about the ending of the second movie without doing so. So after the demon possessed Katie and satisfied its hunger for cameras, it went and picked up Hunter the baby after killing the two parents. And then the credits rolled, and we have to wait for the next movie to figure out what happens next. You know, when you make a sequel to a movie that ended with sequel bait, and you don't actually follow up on that sequel bait until the very ending, do you really expect people to come back for a third? Are we that stupid? Are we that willing to just toss money at the theaters? And how hilarious is it that this is still all taking place in 2006 and you know nobody knows what's become of Katie or Hunter I don't know I guess maybe the police were preventing them from using the footage until just now you know if they actually keep this trend up and make you know I don't know a dozen sequels the people watching them aren't gonna have experience 2006 I'm not sure I entirely buy that Ali was just constantly filming everything like that. It was also pretty cheap to try to tie in with Mika, you know, falling in love with the camera they've got. Is it just me or were the, you know, two minutes of the first movie we saw almost the best frickin' part of this movie? I really like that we got to see more Mika. Man, I like that guy. Mika, if you happen to be watching this, don't worry, I'm not gonna, like, stalk you or something. I'd have to move to America to do that, and I'm kind of happy here. I think it's because you remind me of Spoonie. Anyway, I do kind of buy that they filmed the baby a bunch. Is it just me, or did they skip ahead quite a bit after that first scene? I guess nothing supernatural happened for a long time. Maybe the demon was indecisive. Maybe he didn't want the firstborn until it had hair on its head and could walk. I guess it is probably for possession that this demon wants the baby, maybe for the devil himself, and I can't imagine a less dignified physical manifestation of the Dark Lord than a child that isn't even old enough to stand, so yeah, maybe that's it. The bit with the static and the television was kind of okay. I mean, it's an old idea that the static on a television screen is, you know, the spirit world trying to communicate something to you. Personally, I've always felt that the message was simply, I'm not receiving the signal properly right now, but hey, a lot of people do believe in it. So this follows up on really the only thread of the first one that it could, unless it was going to have Katie run around as a possessed chick the entire time. And as you may remember, I actually pointed out in my video, Thoughts on Paranormal Activity, that what is she going to do? What is so exciting about a person walking around now possessed by a demon? It just isn't that interesting to me. The idea that she might be is interesting and creepy and tense, but once she is, what is she gonna do? I mean, it is maybe a little more interesting now that she has, you know, the firstborn boy. Anyway, so this has us following Katie's sister, who was mentioned in the first film, and her husband tries to deflect the demon. Nice going, dude. And thus, in other words, causes the first film. I would say that what tension there was 
and it was a moderate amount, went almost completely out the window the moment the idea was brought up of sending the demon on to Katie instead. It's an okay character moment, the father saying he's going to protect his. You know, there are people like that, and a man who's the head of a family might do drastic things to keep his family safe. However, we know he's going to succeed. I mean, did anybody seriously think that somehow the possessed Kristen was going to take out at least the father and then, I don't know, either the demon leave Kristen and go to Katie or for the Katie thing to be a completely unrelated demon? Wouldn't it have been funny if there were two completely unrelated demons and then the possessed Katie shows up and the possessed Kristen and they have a chick fight over who gets to deliver the firstborn to, you know, the devil or take him to wherever they're going with him? Okay, that bit with, like, the toy train thing, was that maybe the noisiest, expensive plaything ever, except for maybe Paris Hilton. Okay, the bit where she got dragged down the stairs twice was reasonably effective, but, you know, just as the demon is dragging her down the second time... Seriously, all you needed was to hear a deep voice say, Oh no, you don't, and it would be a parody of that kind of scene. It is a bit unfortunate that Whenever the dog is barking at something, it's wagging its tail. I mean, for anyone who doesn't know, that actually means that the dog is being playful. That's what that means. And when the dog is, like, trying to be threatening in front of the demon, at least I think that's what it was. You know, when the baby is, like, pointing to it, saying hi to it or whatever, the dog has its tail down. I would have thought that it would be straight up, because that's what it's like when it's angry and threatening. Then again, maybe it was supposed to be scared of the demon. It just didn't seem like the rest of its body language was suggesting that it was scared. And, I mean, everything else we see of the dog is the dog trying to protect the child. Also, what was the thing with the child going to the mirror, when, as it turns out, the demon was, you know, in the basement the entire time. Going into the basement, that was really lame. That was drawn out, repetitive, and cliched. Did Brad really add anything to the film, other than maybe that the, you know, pussy hunt bit? I mean, obviously the demon is spelling hunter, because that's what he wants. Or, it wants. I hope I didn't just offend a sexless demon. Or maybe it's she wants, because it only seems to possess females. Is it maybe a demon who doesn't feel entirely comfortable in its own skin, in its own gender? Is the demon any Izzard? This did have some pretty decent jump scares, though. I think everybody in the packed theater that I was in jumped when the kitchen erupted into chaos for that split second. I do think that the whole the demon wants a firstborn idea is a pretty good way to follow up on the first one, and while it only properly followed up on the first one at the very end because everything else was just repeats of what happened in the first one, with a different cast, and then, you know, the backstory details, but it was a decent enough way to follow up on that. I could imagine that a lot of people are going to walk out of this pretty disappointed, though, that it didn't follow up on it any sooner. And at the end of the day, do we really need someone to tell us how it proceeds? after the end of the first one. Isn't it a million times more interesting for all of us to have our own idea of what actually happens after that point? You know, the whole point of, you know, the whole point of these, especially of the first, 
was to use our imagination to make that part of the movie going experience in a time where especially American movies spell everything out. The reason why we revisit great movies is the creativity and the imagination. Part of that comes through in storytelling and the story itself, but some of the greatest horror and thriller films ever made force you to use your own imagination to fill in blanks. Just because we can show everything or just because we can do anything doesn't mean we should automatically do it. We should always think about why we're doing it. Those were my thoughts on Paranormal Activity 2.